The Subaru WRX STI is a solid Japanese sports car with a history and reputation backing it. Inspired from Subaru's history of rally racing, and I got to drive the top of the food chain. The bigger, better, baddest one of them all, the STI. Okay, maybe not bigger as it shares the same platform with the WRX. And this one today is the third generation which shares the same platform with even the Impreza, which isn't the same again from 2014, but that's a, for a different video entirely. See, I've driven tons of Imprezas, a few Outbacks and Foresters, but never really understood the hype with the STIs. Now on paper, it shares the same 2.5 liter turbo boxer engine with the WRX, same body, same size, same everything in fact, almost, but why was it different? Why was it better? Surely not brakes, differentials, and speed couldn't just make a car better, but then I drove it. drive it a little bit without giving any opinions or any thoughts because you've watched a lot of videos about DSDI. I've driven a lot of Subarus, a lot of WRXs, so I wanted this to be very unbiased as to what people think or what people say about these cars. I wanted it to be my absolute honest opinion of how I think the car drives so I'm currently driving it with everything now on auto so there's no no additional settings or anything that I've done to it this was my initial pull with the SDI and I wasn't expecting it to pull that hard in my head now the thoughts going through my head now were like hmm maybe the car is that good but let's not judge so quick let's let's try it again That smile there yeah you know and especially when someone honks at you you know you're going too fast I love it so immediately the first thing you notice is the power is very linear uh, it builds up quite progressively it doesn't like catch you off guard I really like that about it the gear positioning is taking me quite a while to get used to it doesn't doesn't seem I meant the clutch like most of the other cars that I drive, it's not it's not very familiar the, the way the gear is positioned. So it's taking me a little bit to get used to. But one thing you do notice just driving it is at low speeds it doesn't it doesn't have that wow factor. But what I politely meant to say was that low speeds it's quite slow and boring. The engine or the exhaust makes a really nice sound at the back there. I have to point out the, the exhaust did make a rattly droney noise. I can't say if the owner did an exhaust upgrade because I don't know. And looking back, every time I look back, all I see is that giant wing. That looks really, really nice. Just the steering, uh, the precision is quite good actually. Suspension is also really quite good. I mean, you can still feel the bumps. This is not your luxury vehicle it doesn't even for one second pretend to be a luxury vehicle so you can definitely feel the bumps boost kicks in wow wow anything above three four thousand rpms it just snaps and comes alive but like like it's a whole different car it is a good time to say over the standard WRX, the SDI is better at everything, better at driving, better at cornering, better at stopping. That's why you pay the extra money for the SDI. Once you get used to the clutch, it's very nice to drive. It kind of clicks into gear once you once you select the gear, it clicks into neutral and clicks into the gear you want. I like that. Well, not, not the click sound, but you kind of feel it lock in place and I really like that about it. I don't really quite like his tires that are on the car because I seem to hear everything on the road. But my god. Yeah, it just comes alive. 
life. It's it's really, really nice. I like that. So like I said, at low speeds, it's your average car. It's a 2.5 liter engine again. There's nothing wow. It doesn't really have that power, that oomph at low speeds. It's very precise. The power growth or the power band is very progressive. As you drive, it gains more and more speeds. And both 4,000, 5,000 RPMs, you start to feel it push a bit harder, push a bit faster. Uh, the steering is very precise. The steering feel and feedback is really nice. It It's not as precise as my old M3. I still think the BMW has a more uh, precise steering feel. But again, I can't compare both cars. Uh, this is pretty much your cheap power, you know? If you wanna go fast, if you wanna, if you wanna enjoy the ride, like look at the steering there, the steering here. Oh, here we go, 6,000 RPMs. It does go to climb up in the RPM range. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, I love this. I love this and what the exhaust is doing at the back there is is something else. This is this is this is really nice. So these cars sell a lot, quite quite a lot in Canada because of his history with the four-wheel drive, the all-wheel drive system I meant to say. Um, because of the snow we get in many parts of Canada, um, it is definitely smarter to have an all-wheel drive car winter tires more effective regardless of the car you have but an all-wheel drive car nonetheless because well just because you get a lot more traction with an all-wheel drive car there's some construction here these cars sell quite a lot and for quite a long time i didn't really understand subarus because they hold your value quite a bit um especially here in canada they don't, they don't drop all that often and even with lower Subarus, but more effective with the STIs and more performance cars, so to speak. They hold their value quite a lot. And for a long time, I struggled with trying to justify why would an old Subaru Impreza WRX be that expensive? Uh, I got in a few WRX, a few Foresters. The material, it's not all that great, you know, like this one. And I'll get to that in a minute when we pull over, but the material, it's not all that great. For a long time, I, I couldn't really see the value of the Subarus, but again, driving this now for a few hours, it's it's a lot of fun. A lot of linear power, and many people tune this and modify this up to make it much more horsepower, but I think just as the stock, yeah, I really see the value. I really like it. It's, it's really nice. The thrill you get as a stock everyday car is is phenomenal so power shift build the power yeah it does come alive in 4000 rpms for sure so i'm gonna pull over and um and we're gonna talk about the car just a little bit just talk about the styling just a little bit and i'll tell you some of my thoughts okay so sign me up i love this i want one of these these are really nice cars the way they drive is just absolutely a riot i like that the way they look on the other hand is something even better i really like the shape now the previous sti a lot of people might disagree i didn't like them very much they were quite small i don't like cars that are too small this size is just okay i really really like this size it looks mean it's got all the air vents to show how aggressive it is that it's a true sports car and i really like that about it the exhaust i think the exhaust of this has been upgraded i don't know for sure comment down below and let me know listen to this one Big hood scoops, big air vents, flare fenders, racing STI bucket seats. There's almost no way you can't fall in love with the car. It's just very cool. It looks cool, it rides cool, and for what you're getting 305 horsepower, you can't go wrong. This is 
your everyday, definitely street legal sports car. I, I don't disagree. And for the price, phenomenal. If you wanted a car that you could track and daily and enjoy, this is it. Because you wouldn't lose any value doing it. The only issue is its reliability. These engines haven't been known to be very reliable. But if you're okay with that and you're handy, this is a great phenomenal car. Seating is practical just like in every other car. Trunk space is very practical just like you would in any other car. It functions just as a daily car and I like it. So jumping in here, I've talked a lot about the material quality and the seats and the steering and everything laid out in here. But there's a few things I want to touch on. So I'll start up this just a little bit. This display as the beeping stops, this display is your general Subaru WRX display. There's not much difference in your display here, but certain things do stand out. Now for down here in your center control stack, you have this little button here called your diff control. For most people, I think are gonna put it in auto as they drive around, but if you wanted to increase and reduce your differential settings as you drive along or when you're on the racetrack, you can do so by turning it all the way up or turning it all the way down. Right above that, you've got the knob where you can decide if you want to put it in sports, sport sharp, or intelligence. You push back down for intelligent mode, but if you want to put it in an aggressive handling sort of, it makes everything more uh, sporty, you put it in sport. And if you want to go extreme, you put it in sport sharp. That's for the most equipped drivers on the track or if you feel you know what you're doing and you can handle all of its 305 horsepower with no driver aids whatsoever, then go right ahead. Shifter, very standard, nothing out of the ordinary. The thing that stand out, stands out with Subaru is getting into reverse. Some cars you have the reverse all the way on the left end, but this one, your standard manual shifter, you have it on the right, uh, right bottom end, all the way on the right bottom end. And to get into reverse, you have to obviously hit the clutch pull up this uh, pull up the lever underneath the uh pull up the lever underneath the shifter and put it in reverse that's the only way the car will go into reverse other than that the most uh the most you would get to on the gear on the gear selector is your fifth and sixth if that lever isn't pulled out to your subaru layout nothing out of the ordinary i quite like the size of this car i've mentioned that um the previous generation wrs sti we're smaller. Um, this generation of cars with the Evo, the E90, I also quite like the size of the E90. I think everything below that, no, I do also like the size of the E46 and the E90, but this for me feels more like that compact sedan E46 size and everything just kept getting bigger and bulkier after this. Um, so, so this size really does resonate with me. I, I can't keep saying, if you're looking for luxury, um, top of the line quality materials, well then this is not the car for you. But if you're looking for a nice car that you know would hold its value, that would drive really nice, that would deliver good power and have parts that aren't too, too expensive and readily available, then this is the car for you. fun with it and drive it back home. Uh, Subaru has such a long rally heritage, just like um, Audi does. Kind of see the sense in buying one of these cars as your daily car that you would occasionally take to the track. A lot of people buy these in hatchbacks in Canada, I guess, for more practicality. You don't, you seldom see a lot of sedans. I personally like the sedans. Not to say there's anything wrong with the hatchback or anything like that. I just like the sedans. I like how they look. They, the big wing looks very nice on the sedans. And the car just has a very appealing look from the outside. Should I spend the extra money to buy the STI? Well, my answer is yes. If you can spend that extra money because one, you're not going to lose all that much in depreciation compared to the other WRXs. The 
these things hold their values like a rock. I can't stop saying that. Market today for these cars are asking uh, twenty twenty five thousand dollars, depending on how clean it is. This one, I guess, would be in that twenty five thousand dollar range. It's only ninety two thousand kilometers on that car, so still very young in its life, and everything looks and feels very good. Some rock chips, as you would expect, but everything looks good. The paint is in immaculate shape. The interior is in immaculate shape. I can't fault the car all that much. As you can tell, the Subaru STI did make an impression. I apologize, I know this video is extremely long. It's a first. If you got all the way to the end, please do remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I just took some solo driving shots of me in the Subaru STI. I enjoy the car. I spent some more time with it, just feeling it out, driving it, and getting to know it a little better. And it just impressed me more and more as I drove it around.